The Dex Legacy is intended for a mature, adult audience and contains themes that some may find upsetting. A comprehensive list of trigger warnings covering the entire season can be found in the show notes. Previously on The Dex Legacy, en route to the Blood Road, Ren revealed our escape plan to Varian and Isra. The plan demands much of Isra and she is still processing her emotions. Ren is concerned that she will never forgive him, but I have faith that their relationship will endure. They have faced many challenges together. Meanwhile, Nathaniel Dex is about to learn what being a new member of the International Confederation of World Leaders really means. Messages. Of the correspondence filtered through your staff, there are over 600 items requiring your personal attention. Hmm. I have attempted to prioritise these items for you. Oh? What's first on the list? A message from the International Confederation of World Leaders. Oh, yes. They are due to convene in one week. Uh, yes, I'm aware. They wish to convene here on Dex Island. What? Uh, Tristan? Yes, Nathaniel. Is this some sort of joke? It is not. It says here they've decided that the first meeting with a newly initiated state should be hosted by that state. Damn it. Ovon Lee must be behind this personally. I received no warning. Of course he is. He wants to come here and put his nose where it doesn't belong. There's an obvious solution, Nathaniel. I wonder if our minds are aligned. There are a number of large houses on the island that are currently unoccupied. If we select one and hold the event there, they needn't be anywhere near the lab or the military base or our primary administrative facilities. Yes, there's a big house on the cliffs north of here. Uh, Do you know what it's called? East Point. (laughs) How imaginative. If whoever lived there named it, they didn't deserve it. Tristan, see if it's fit for purpose. We should be able to keep everyone contained there, and it's close enough that I can come back when necessary. This will be difficult. It will involve every representative and their staff arriving for two days. No single house will be able to contain them. Can it be done? As long as I can focus all efforts on this event, there's nothing to be concerned about. We can use other houses in the vicinity. And no maps will be issued, so there'll be no curious individuals wandering off and getting lost too close to the palace or military base. Good. As for my personal staff, uh, Tristan, that pair I had at the last Confederation. Valentina Vardy and Kit Johansson? Yes. I want them on my team again. Uh, They were excellent. How is Vardy? She took that spike for me and you said it was serious. Nothing Devic's team couldn't put right. When it comes to toxins... We either invented them, or based our improved versions on them. Valentina was sensible enough to bring the spike with her, so we identified the toxin and acted quickly. And what was it? One of ours. A nasty one, too. Devik was disappointed by its performance, but apparently the delivery method was crude. Either way, a Valentina pulled through. I'll make sure they're on your team again. Good. Nathaniel, why have you altered my deadlines? Good morning, Osa. You cannot expect me to build an airship in this time frame. With half my staff building defences on the North Jakran border, this is ludicrous. 
We have a large-scale recruitment drive in progress as we speak, and Tristan is in charge of the permanent and temporary settlement of new workers. You should be well covered. They are yet to be on board at Nathaniel. Getting workers from first arrival to fully autonomous and capable engineers and mechanics is a long process. No? <sighs> Devek, you are oddly quiet. When Osa starts talking about deadlines, you usually have a lot to say. Um, I, uh... Well... Something's wrong? Nothing you need to worry about. Huh. Which means I need to worry about it. Don't make me ask Auto. It's fine. A small incident only. An unstable virus got loose and I've had to quarantine a section of the lab. With people inside? Eight were caught out. And what's being done? Well, they're still alive, although their symptoms are... progressing. They're monitoring themselves closely. The sweats are easing, but the blood boils and nausea are affecting their ability to take accurate readings. Will they die? (laughs) Most certainly. The trick is getting as much information as possible before they do. The infected team has been developing an infection similar in style to one we found in the seed data, a plague known as the Black Death. On our ancestral planet, it was carried by small mammals called rats. This strain could be carried effectively by our common Tamet lizards. I see. Incoming urgent news. Read. President Aravan has died in office aged 48. Erla Aravan has taken his place as president of South Jakra. Erla Aravan? His wife? Yes. Tristan, you did this? My people were involved in an undercover capacity, yes. There were three separate parties organising coups at the same time and I had people in all of them. And you ensured Erla Aravan's party succeeded? I did. I've met her a few times, but we've never spoken for long. Is she... agreeable? She's a rare combination of indifferent to Dex Island and pragmatic. She's not an idealist. She'll act in her own self-interest. Hmm, interesting. Hmm, is it? Yes, it is, Devek. We're currently fortifying the border between North Jakra and South Jakra. If this new Aravan's interested in securing the continent and she's prepared to act, that would place us in the middle of a war. Exactly. Whatever side pays us will win. We just need to make sure the new president of South Jakra understands that our relationship with North Jakra is nothing more than business. If we do that, she may choose to outbid her neighbour. If that happens, we'll be working for her, and she'll gain the upper hand. Either way, more money for us. Aravan, what kind of woman is she? She's a high-class Jackran. So paranoid, used to getting her own way, ambitious, and may as well be living on a different planet. A different planet? Hmm? How so? High-class Jackrans have no idea what the real world is or how it works, Osa. They're completely cut off from the lives of everyday people and see existence as a game they intend to win. A game? That should please you, Tristan. I am the master of all games, Devik. This one is comparatively dull. But I'll try my best to enjoy it. We're a long way from the training quarter. We're not playing games anymore. I need a status report now. What are your positions? Ren? South. Varian, they found a new favourite foothold. How many? Ren's got 11, Varian. That. I'm doing a pass. Good to know. Thanks, Raya. Paris? We've been taking fire from above. I'm hunting. Above? How's that? Tunnels, Varian. If a low mountain tunnel leads to an underground stairway, they'll loop up behind us. We collapsed a few of them already, but there must be more. There are loads. Shiv, you there? Shiv's busy here. Pax? Yeah, Paris, you need me? Um, sure, Pax. I want to flush them out. On my way! We've got a wave coming in from the north. Hey, Ndos, how are we doing? <laughs> we are already busy, Varian. I'm on my way. Ren, I see another ten coming in and... Wait, 
You've got snipers getting into position up behind you. Ren, find cover now. Ash, you there? You're finally calling me in. Take them out. On it. Ah, oh, it's good to have something to do. Serious request, Varian. Don't make me shadow Ren tomorrow. It's boring. Ren, stop showing off. Faris? Pax went into the tunnels. They keep coming out, and I keep killing them. You think they would stop after losing so many? It's Dominar all over again. Borders mean bloodshed. Ren, save the philosophy until later, will you? Where are you? He's good. I just took out another wave. He's right. This is their new favorite foothold. Thanks, Raya. Ash, any luck with the snipers? Have any shot you? No? Well, there's your answer. I'm coming down now, Ren. I'm about as useful as a rusted rifle up here. All right, if you insist. Ash, get stuck in. Raya? I see a retreat happening. Yeah, they're pulling back. Looks like they've had enough for the day. Are you kidding me? I just got here. We'll put you on the north side tomorrow, Ash. How does that sound? Sure. And Ren, stay at camp. Don't worry, Ash. We know you can handle it. Then let me handle it. We will, Ash. All right, let's regroup. Raya, you got us covered? Eyes in the skies till you say otherwise. Good. Let's strengthen this position now and do something about those tunnels. Harold, this is all truly fascinating, but you'll have to write your responses down because I can't hear a word you're saying. It's the way the disease has progressed. It is clearly tampering with your vocal faults. Yes, that's right. Write it down. Well, of course we'll look after your husband and children. This is Dex Island. I can assure you they'll have every opportunity to thrive and they'll be well looked after. Thank you, I appreciate that. <sighs> That's quite all right. It's important you're able to rest easy about these things. Your work has been truly invaluable. Well, Write it down, Harold! <coughs> Dear. Yes, you're coughing up blood now, I can see that. Is that you? Make sure you record it. Devek? Hello, Elsa. What is it? Oh. Oh, Harold, you look terrible. I'm so sorry. It has been an honor working with you, too, my friend. You understand what he's saying? Yes, of course. No, I did not know that. No, I doubt it. He's far from stable, but he, he would never do that. All right, Harold. You go and lay down for a little while. Uh, what did he say? He thinks you did this on purpose because of how things ended between you seven years ago. You didn't do this, did you? <laughs> Gods, no! In all that mumble, did he happen to mention that he left me with no warning or explanation? Well, he has my sympathy. Sometimes explaining human things to you is hard work. Look, I do my best. Uh, Devik, the International Confederation of World Leaders is coming to Dex Island. Yes, I know. How long is Harold's predicament going to be going on for? Because Nathaniel and Tristan will try to control this, but we may have to show government representatives at least part of the lab and hospital. But we can't. We have to be prepared. Is there any part of this place you can show an international delegation without Tristan having to murder them afterwards? Oh, I mean... I, I can shut off the labels in the culture lab. Is there nowhere else? Well, it would have been here, but then... Harold and his team. Yes, I can see. And it would be impractical and dangerous to move them. Yes, but... How long do they have? Two days. Three tops. Oh. Well, then, we might be all right, no? I hope so. <laughs> For their sakes. <laughs> Lou? 
little princess. You are agitated. If we could just take the fight to them. But we can't, Isra. We're defending the border. If we cross the border, we'll be inciting hostilities. In Dominar, we were deep in enemy territory, and I thought that was bad. If we could go over the wall, we'd have finished this conflict in 24 hours. You, me, and Varian could have finished them off by ourselves. Yeah, great. Why include us? Oh, well, well I guess you could come, Faris. Nice. I need water. Does anyone have water? Take mine, Lady Shiv. Thanks, Hindos. Why do I feel so tired? It is no wonder. You are very intense in battle. Intense? That's one word for it. What do you mean? I mean you go nuts. It's like you're a different person or something. It's kind of scary. And impressive. I find it impressive anyway. Sure, Ash, it's impressive. Raya says it's always the nice people who do this. Like, normally, they'd be too sweet to hurt anyone, so in battle they're a different person. Are you saying I'm too nice? No. Well, maybe. Because it's never happened before. But you've never been in proper battles before, Shiv. And we've only seen you in four since we arrived. Raya said you never know until you're in it. It seems Raya has been saying a lot to you, Ferris. You have been seeing much of one another, yes? And what's it to you, big guy? All right, all right, let's not fixate on any of this. Shiv, you're fine, and we're here for you. Ferris, hang out with whoever you'd like in your free time. Don't worry, I will. To business. All right, Varian, here's today's losses. Thanks, Ash. Wounded? Six injured and receiving treatment. Two being returned to the island. Uh, One likely reassignment to research. All right, thanks. And how are you doing? I'm just looking forward to tomorrow, Varian. Thanks for having my back out there. Hey, Ren, you tell me where to be and I'll be there. It's just annoying when that means I have nothing to do. You cannot protect us forever, White Princess. (laughs) Okay, okay, I get it. You are used to doing all of the work. It is your way. Raya's still in the air keeping an eye on things. We should bring her down. Good luck. She hates it on the ground. You know that. Well, I did not know that. But clearly you did. It's good for her to walk around a bit. I'll go and call her in. Thanks, Ash. All right, everyone, go and get yourselves cleaned up and do the rounds. We'll see you in a bit. Ash is a good one. Yeah. He'll look after them. What do you mean, Ren? I mean when we're gone. I think he'll look after them. Yeah. I think you're right. He will. I know what you're waiting for. Have you thought about... it? I've tried very hard not to. We can't do this if you're not okay with it. It's not just that. I've thought about something else we need to talk about. Another potential problem. What? What? Our treatments. Devot keeps a pretty close eye on us. We're always going in and out of the lab for top-ups. He's always talking about stabilizing us. What if, after all this time, we need him? You're saying that at this point we might need Devot's treatments to survive? He has done a lot to us. I think we have to understand that leaving could... Well, Dex Island might kill us, but we might die faster without it. I don't care. What? I want out. I never want to go back to that lab again. I don't care if I end up coughing up my internal organs somewhere out there in the wilderness. At least I won't be dying with Devek doing that creepy soothing thing he does when he's pretending to listen, but he's really taking readings and... No. Yeah, I'll take the chance. Me too. If we're going out there to die, at least we'll be doing it on our terms. Agreed. I mean, I don't want to die. No, the idea is to live. And be free. But I... I have to ask this. What? Is the last time you malfunctioned, you almost died. Me and Ren didn't. You did. Uh, yes, I remember. And I'm better now. What's your point, Varian? Ren, if that happened again, and we couldn't save her, would you be able to live with it? 
What? It's a possibility. I have to know the variables if we're going out there. If somebody goes down in battle, we keep fighting. If one of us goes down out there, the others have to keep running. I don't want you to keep running. But none of this, none of this means anything if... Ren, would you keep running? Yes, probably, maybe. Th th that's as good as I can give you. All right. So what's the whole plan? Is? Answer the question, Ren. <sighs> All right. We use the nets for two minutes each, or until Auto says she's lost contact with our chips. We head south into a terror and don't stop. We're aiming for the Jackrat Undercity. That's hundreds of miles away. Thousands. We won't get there overnight, but that's our destination. We'll go to Ranet first. Why there? Because it's a single city that sits across the borders of Aterra, North Jakra, and South Jakra. From there, we can cross into South Jakra easily enough and get transport to Jakrat. There's a rich modding trade there as well, so our eyes won't stand out like they would in other cities. It's a good place to disappear. And going through Aterra means no air searches. Why is that? You can't just fly military aircraft over other countries, Varian. If they sent Angel City or Raya out over a terror, they'd have to have a reason for it. And Nathaniel will want to keep our disappearance as quiet as possible. So you think it's a good plan? No, it's crazy. It's not even a real plan. It, all you've got is disable chips, run south, keep running south until we reach the biggest slum on the planet. And then what? Live happily ever after? Well, then we work out our next steps. So it's a crazy plan, but we have to try. This is the closest we've ever been to a realistic way out. The irony of being caught in a net to secure our freedom. <laughs> yeah, well, that wasn't lost on me either. Ren, as soon as our chips are disabled, Nathaniel will know. No, he won't. How come? Auto? Hello, Ren. How long can you give us before you report our chips failing? I will give you as long as I can while accounting for the distance you travel and how long it will take for one of your comrades to raise the alarm. I estimate a maximum of one hour. Auto, do you have a route map for us through the Aterran Nationalist Lines? Yes. I will be communicating with a drone that will lead you through until you are clear. It may take some time. As long as we make it. So, we're doing this. Is? You can do this? There's only one way I can do this. Knock me out first. What? I trust you both, but if you come at me with that thing, I might not be able to control what I do. So, knock me out first. Are you sure? Yes. All right. I volunteer. Fine. Just don't put me in a coma. You'll have to carry me. I'll do my best. Ready? Go! In Season 2, Episode 2 of The Dex Legacy, you heard Chris Gregory as Nathaniel Dex, Warren Graham as Tristan Crail, Annika Cordes as Dr. Osis Riva Starva, Louis Watson as Dr. Devik Shah, Kamara Elliott as Varian Dex, Kelsey Griffin as Isra Dex, Charlie Richards as Ren Dex, Stevie Skinner as Raya, Danielle Ellett as Farris, Ray Whitty as Pax, Reginald West as Hain Doss, Danny Scott as Ash, Raki Sharma as Shiv, and Emily Inkpen as Auto, with music by Alan Stroud. Season 2 was recorded at Orpheus Studio in London by Richard Campbell. The Dex Legacy is written by me, Emily Inkpen, and produced by Alternative Stories. If you enjoyed that episode, please like, subscribe, and leave a review. It really does help. If you would like to support The Dex Legacy, you can. Just visit www.thedexlegacy.com forward slash support for links and details. Special thanks go out to our Season 2 Kickstarter supporters, including Martin Glusborough, Omar Kuheji, Keith Sanderson, Don Flinspa, Tom Bridges, Jeff Park, Lenny Price, Fraser Armitage, Dave Chadwick, Matt Adcock, Caroline Mersey, and Matthew Martell for making Season 2 possible. And now a trailer for Season 2 of Chaker, a science fiction audio drama by Karen Heimdall. must be on Mars. We were starting to scent. <gasps> oh, Higa, let you. Are you there? Chaka, a science fiction audio drama. 
Season 2. So I really am alone. Back to what happened, prisoner. Uh, you... You don't know what happened on Earth? As you probably know, Mars broke contact with Tellas Jigov many souls ago. Earth went silent the year I turned eight, and we haven't heard anything from there since. <laughs> I have better things to do than listen to these fairy tales. Can you for one moment imagine that I am exactly what I tell you I am? What would it take for you to believe that? If your story is a bit more plausible, that'd help. Loyalty can stretch many ways. Seems like you're quite adept at keeping secrets yourself. If needed, yes. Cheka, Season 2. For more information, please visit y2kpod.com slash Cheka. That's C-H-A-I-K-A. I thought I wouldn't feel alone anymore once I got here, once I connected with some humans, but I feel more alone. I I only had my mom and then Hyuga and Lechu and I never I never questioned if I could trust them. It took me a while to consider them friends, but now now I have no one. 